Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Camera. All good? Okay. All right. Whoa, that's loud. Okay, everyone, settle down. But it's good to hear the excitement, and we've still got energy, week five. Um, one quick note, if you're looking for the lecture slides, this is too loud. Um, it's under 4.2. I forgot we're off by one because of the public holiday. So go to week four, lecture 4.2. That's today's slides. Um, I'll fix them up at some point. See, classic off by one error. We, we don't stop making them. Whoops. OK. How are we all feeling? How's, ooh, how's the assignment going? What stage are you up to? Finish two. Finish two. That's good. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big departure from what we're maybe used to. It's a bit bigger in scope. You have starter code. You coming in? No. <laughs> um, so it's okay if you're getting a bit overwhelmed. Make sure you use the resources. They're there for a reason. Go to the help sessions. Use the forum and all of that stuff. And also, I think today's uh, lecture content might help a bit. Alrighty. So we recap strings a bit. Who enjoyed the strings content? It's interesting stuff. If you've programmed in other languages, you use strings all the time, and it's really easy to not think about how any of it's working. You just see a string, and you think, oh, it's just a data type, just like an integer. But it's not. It's a more of a complex data type that combines characters and arrays and things like that. Remember to keep the noise down while we, while we talk. All right, so let's recap strings really quickly. Strings are, think of them as a, I guess you could say an abstract data type, although not quite. Um, maybe a complex data type, because it's not really a data type in itself. It's a combination of arrays and characters. That's all a string is. Um, and it just happens to be a really useful uh, combination of data types. Um, like any time we have a data type that we design, or we import, or whatever it is, we have a single identifier for the whole string, which is really handy. And importantly, anything you can do with arrays, you can do to strings. That's also something that it's easy to maybe forget um, the implication of. So if you had a string like this, which is just a character array in C, and you wanted to count how many times the letter uh, E is in, is in the string, right? you don't have to get too fancy and look at string libraries and this and that. What could you do? What could you do to count the number of characters in this string? The number of E's, for example. 
you just loop through it. Loop through it if character is equal to E, you know, count plus one or something like that. So you've got to think of strings as arrays because that's all they are in C. And in fact, in a language like Python, that's why you can do um, looping over strings, for example. And really importantly, um, what do strings or character arrays in C must contain at the end? The null terminator. And the reason for that, we, we mentioned on Friday, is because typically we don't know how long a string is going to be. I've got a different length of a name than all of you, maybe you know, most of you. And so the container of a string is generally bigger than the value. And so we have to note where the string will end. Because after this position 13, in this string, let's say there's 50 uh, characters in this string. After the position 13, there could be valid characters there from the previous value. And so there would be very, it would be very tricky to figure out, um, well not tricky, it'd be, a lot, it'd be too much work to figure out which is the new string and which is remnants of the old string. So what we do is we say, okay, if you ever see this special character, that's the end of the, the valid content of my, my string. And so when we build a string from a string literal, for example, here. Wait, I've got my highlighter. Ooh. When we build a string from a string literal, C automatically puts in the null terminator at the end. Because it needs to mark that this is where the string is ending. And it confuses a lot of people because you can't see a null terminator. It's not a rendered character. Um, and we don't see it, like it's not in the string literal, so it's easy just to forget that it exists, but it's there. So if you look at this string literal, how many characters are in it? Six, yeah, exactly. Why? Four for Jake, there's exclamation mark, and there's the null character, null terminator at the end. But don't get confused <laughs> when you call, where's my mouse? Hello? Oh, there it is. When you call string length, which is a function in C that gives us the length of a string, it doesn't count the null terminator. And we, that's why when we had our demo program on Friday, we had to, I think we had to add one or take one off the count. But that's just a little edge case there. All right, so let's go through. This is like a, a nice little cheat sheet slide um, that you can grab. So string literals, if we have double quote, quotes, we're telling C that this isn't the identifier Jake, it's the string literal. It's, a, it's an array of characters called Jake. And, we, and the way we denote this is the double uh, quotation mark that wraps the string literal. And don't forget single quotes are for characters. Really handily, C gives us a way to assign string literals to a character array. We can just do that line of code there. Now, in this case, in this exact highlighted case, because we're not telling name how big it is, does anyone know how big name will be on, in this line? Give me a number. Well, yeah, if you count my name. Jake is four plus the space is five, runs up six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So who thinks uh, thirteen? Who thinks 14? Okay, very good, yeah, 14. I think that would be correct. Because the null terminator is there, and because we're not giving it the size, it's computing the size dynamically from the length of the value, which will be 14 values. If you wanted to check that, what could you do? And? What would you have to do to that? Add one, because string length won't count that. Okay, so you gotta, if, I'm not trying to be tricky here, I'm just trying to, we're trying to deal with all the edge cases because these are what throws people off. All right, and we have a bunch of useful string functions, although I would argue that that last one isn't too useful, I've never seen it used, but if you want to read a string and print a string, they're pretty common, you can use f gets or f puts. There's also, you can use um, printf. String length gets the string, yeah, string copy is really important. We use that in the demo program on Friday as well. You can't assign 
strings to other string variables because they're not because they're arrays and you can't assign arrays like that. So we either have to go through and copy each element or we can use string copy, which does it all for us. String concatenation, also really useful, adds one string to the end of the other. And string compare compares two strings. OK, here's what I was just sort of talking about. Something that's pretty annoying, I'll be honest, pretty annoying about strings in C is that you can't simply override or copy a string variable. So in this example, if I've got the initial name being Jake and I want to rename it, I don't remember why it was called Mr. Otterington. There was probably some reference last time. Um, we can't just say name equals to some other string literal. So we have to use string copy. So we can't do what's on the bottom of that slide. Are there any questions about strings? All pretty good? Yes? All right. So what are we doing today? We're talking about two-dimensional arrays or 2D arrays. Um, you will have noticed, hopefully, if you've started the assignment, that they're in the assignment as well. So hopefully you're a little familiar with it, which, is, which would be really good. 2D arrays is kind of like um, nested while loops in the sense that it's not really anything new. It's a really simple concept. It's if arrays can store any data type, why can't we store an array as the, as the data type? So it's not a new technique. It's, not a, it's a new technique, sure, but it's not a new concept. Um, it's just using what we know about arrays. But it does come useful often. OK. So we know that arrays are homogenous. What does homogenous mean? Oh, yes. No, no, that's contiguous. What does homogenous mean? Same data type, right? If you have a homogenous demographic, it means they're all the same type of ethnicity or something like that. And in, in, our, in our context, if a, data type, if, a, if a data structure is homogenous, it means that it's got the same type in each element. So we can have an array of characters, which are just strings, an array of integers, an array of structs even, whatever we want. Um, arrays of structs are really useful. This was in the, that sort of bonus video that I uploaded. But you just say simply, well, I want an array of a struct whatever. This is, in this example, it's struct students. Whoa, what did I just do? And firstly, I can use the um, index notation to extract a particular student, a particular struct. Now, this thing's annoying me. Oh no, oh, oh. I almost quit the stream. Um, so which element is this going to pick out in the lineup? The, yeah, the second one or the middle one, right? Because it's got the index one. Why do I keep losing my mouse? Okay, here. This index one, so it's gonna be the second. And then we use the struct identif uh, the dot um, syntax to access a particular field. So I'm accessing a field within a struct within an array. So really, if you, if you have a fairly decent grasp of arrays and structs, you can pretty much intuit how to combine them together. Does that make sense? All right. So why can't we store an array of an array? And, and we, we absolutely can. So this slide's not too useful. This is probably more useful. And it's not too visible, but it looks a lot better on my screen than it does on the projector. So what we say is, so first of all, there's still a um, core data type being stored in each element. That's not changing. So in this case, it's an integer, right? So if I've got a 2D array in each element, there's going to be an integer. 
Then we have the name of the identifier. In this case, it's a grid or my grid. And then here's what's changing. Rather than just having the length of the single dimensional array, we have the length of the single dimensional array, which is the rows, typically, the number of rows first. And then we have in each row, how, many, how long is that subarray? And so it, it, this is a, a square grid, so it, it happens to also be five. And if you can see here, we have whoops, zero to four, and then zero to four. Can you see this? The lines are just really faint. So if I now want to access an element, okay. First it's the rows, second it's the columns. So two, three is going to be this, this square here, right? Okay, let's go do a, a little demo. A little visu visualization in Figma. Does Figma have a dark mode? Does anyone know? Probably not. Go away. Whoa. All right. So if I wanted to make a 2D array that looks something like this, what would my definition be? How would I declare it? Let's say they're storing integers. What do I type? Int because that's the type that's going to be stored in each element. Then we give it a name, so we can call it my grid again. What next? So you reckon four and three, exactly. We'll build something like that. Shall we code this up? Uh, I should put this in week five, right? Okay, bear with me a second. Pokemon or something? All right. 
I know, my riveting lecture content is, can you read that? What's wrong with these, this projector? Okay, that looks a bit better. All right, so let's, um, let's just code this up and see how sort of simple it is to create what we're saying. So int grid, what did we say, 4, 3? Okay, that's it, that will create. Okay, I have a question for you. In memory, when line 5 runs, is there an error with that or am I, okay, no, it's just really slow. In line five, when that code runs, how much memory are we asking from the operating system? In bits or bytes, just tell me the unit. What do you say? Twelve oh, 12 ints, okay. Yeah, but then, okay, and then how big is an int? 32 bits or eight bytes. Uh, so you multiply them together, you get what the, <laughs> uh, Let's think about it, right? What's the answer? 48, 48 bytes, yeah, 48 bytes, right? So it's the size of an int. Here's something really fun, actually. Is it size of like that? What am I doing wrong? Can I do, I can't do this? What have I done wrong? Uh, it might be no underscore. Let's just try this. Oh no, oh yeah, of course that's right. For for but uh, for bytes, yes, yes, 32 bits. Yeah, that's right, what am I talking about? So you can actually get the size of a data type, uh, of a variable's data type in, in C using the size of function. So you can see here, let me put a new line. And int is four, that should say, you know, bytes. Now, you can't, unfortunately, you can't say how big is grid and we'll explain why that won't work in a future lecture. But you can say, so we can say that, um, grid is size of an int times three times four. Does that, does that make sense? Ignore those warnings. So grid is 48 bytes. Okay, that's just a little fun aside. Um, all right. Maybe I'll just comment that out. All right, so we cr create a grid here. Now, we could shorthand initialize it. And what I mean by that is we could do something like, you know how we have, we can do something like this. But each element has to be an array, which means we'd have to do something like, right? But I find that's a little bit, maybe it's a little confusing. We don't typically do it. So if I wanted to initialize this grid, what would I do? Loop around it. There's a lot of chatter today. What's going on? Is it like a special Pokemon day or something? So how do I start looping here? 
Well, we say loop around it. Guys, remember the, the noise picks up really easily. Um, if I want to loop over a 2D grid, how do I do it? Use a 2D loop, exactly right. We have to loop over the, the first dimension of the array, and then every time we loop, we loop over the second dimension to, to access every element. So I could use a, in a while loop. I could also use a for loop, which we haven't done too much in the lectures, but they're pretty useful for this kind of stuff. Because they let us just initialize i and j or whatever. Actually, I'm not going to use i. I'm going to use um, row. So my, for my outer loop, what do I put here, four or three? Four? Yeah. We loop over the outer loop first and the inner loop second, which sort of makes sense. Now, every time I loop, that shouldn't be I, it should be row. That's right, right? It's row first. Every time I loop, we need to loop again. And now how would I access the actual element here? Yeah, but let's let someone else say it to you. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you're right. What do I do here? Yeah, exactly right. You get the idea. Grid. Row, because row represents the index of the row, col represents the row of the col. And if I just want to um, initialize it to zero, I can just equal zero, exactly, because that's just an integer. Let me comment this a bit. Loop over the outer dimension first, which is the rows. Every time we loop, we loop again for the cols. So if we go back to our diagram, okay, let me just do, let me show you it in another way. Uh, we initialize it to zero. And what if we, okay, let's just initialize it first. I'll come up with a nice little um, demo later. Uh, what's wrong here? Line seven. Yeah, but I'm using it here. So why am I getting this warning? Does anyone know? I don't know, that's weird. Uh, okay, I think it is just because we're setting it only and not using it. I think it's okay. Uh, yeah, no, okay, yeah. It's just saying we're not doing anything with it, which is fine. All right. So if this is how we can loop over to initialize it, we can print it in the exact same way. So for now, I'm going to just copy it, paste it. And instead of assigning it to zero, what do we want to do? Print it out. So we use printf uh, percent %d grid row, whoops, col. Now, what I'm going to do is put a space after we print it, because this is printing a line, right? Because we first we go down the row, so we start here, and then we print Col, col, col. So there'll be a space. Then I want a new line after the inner loop finishes. Y 
Yeah, and we get our grid, just as we designed. Who's happy with how we, like how the pace and the, the the concept of what's going on? We're roughly okay. Once we start, I find, once we start getting into things like two-dimensional grids, it starts becoming a bit tricky to keep everything in our mind. So what I really, really suggest, especially with assignment one, is to get a pen and pencil and paper out while you're working and draw out your data structures. This is something programmers do their entire career. We always try and visualize what it is that we're dealing with. Right? If we didn't print out this grid like this, and, and draw it out, we would have a lot worse idea of what's actually going on. So when you're doing the Pac-Man assignment, draw out your grid, draw out what you know about it, and if something conflates with that, you can figure it out. Any questions about this so far? Any good questions online? No? <laughs> all right, ask some more good questions. All right. So what I thought we would do today is a little different from most lectures, is to try and, I've got a bit of feedback that um, the concepts are making sense together and, uh, and isolated, but bringing it together can be tricky, which I totally agree with. So what do we think about making a bigger demo program, sort of like Pac-Man, but not obviously as in depth, that brings together lots of different concepts and we'll write something together that uses structs, 2D arrays, functions, and all this stuff. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me too. All right, well, first, we've got to decide what we want to build. I thought we could try, I don't know if we'll finish it, but we could try something like battleships, because that uses a 2D grid. Something simple, we're not doing this full two-player game and all that stuff. But maybe like just being able to put a ship in and stuff like that. Does that sound good? Battleships? We've all played it, we're all familiar with it. All right. We'll still do our um, Kahoot and all that stuff. All right, let's save this here, battleships.c. Let me just copy all of this over. All right, I'm gonna try putting this here. So I've got a bit nicer. Um, I really need to like lift this up or something. Anyway. All right, let's think here, everyone. How do we, how do we plan this? What should we do? Any, any ideas for where we start off? So, Define the grid size. So that's a great idea, right? Let's figure out our, our grid. But more than that, I think, we want to figure out what data do we need to keep track of this game. Grid size is an important one. But we've got to think about where, do we, where are we creating it? Is it just in main as a 2D array? What we typically do is have a struct that represents the game or the, or the, or the program. So, I'm, and that's a good place to start this off. So, struct, we could call it the board. Is it a board? What do you call it, I guess? We could call it also the game. Don't forget the semicolon. And I totally agree, in this, we, we probably want the grid. Okay? Now, Let's think about battleships. The grid is a bunch of pegs, right? That's expensive for a piece of paper. Jeez. The grid is a bunch of coordinates, 
That's fine. Now, let's think about it. A grid's either empty or it's got a ship piece occupying it, which might lead you to think that it's a Boolean. But then I think you can also, the player could also try and um, what, bomb it, I guess. So it's also got um, if it's been hit or detected. And even the empty grids that don't have a ship, they also need to know if they've been hit. Right. So what data type should each element be? Int, car. There's, okay, there's a few ways we could do it. Character would work. Int would also work, actually. And enum would probably be really good. Ah, uh, hold on. No. No, not an enum, because there could be a ship and it could be hit. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's right, but it's not a single enum, right? Yeah. yeah, that's more what I'm thinking. So what I'm thinking we do is we have whether or not there's a ship occupying it and whether or not it's been hit. Are we missing anything else? I, I haven't played in a while, so I might... Sorry? This, let's deal with the ships um, later, maybe. Okay, that would be the other way of doing it, is just keep track of the ships. No, but we need to know if the empty grid has been hit. So, okay. So, um, been hit could be an int. Has the enemy tried to hit this position? I think, actually, that might be all we put in it. Actually. I think the rest of the information goes in the, in the ship. And this is where just experience and building stuff, right? In assignment one or assignment two, we would figure this out for you and, and start you off this way. So I think the other thing we would want is a struct ship, okay? And this is where there's a bit more information. So I think there's also a, there's a being hit here. So has the ship... Oh, no, it's... Maybe that's sunk. I think there's a length. Right? That's how long the ship is. What else do we need to keep track of? Yeah, yeah. Which direction it's facing. And for that, I think we will use an enum direction which we need to define. Um, is that fine? That does the job? What else? I might just call that d direction like that. What else do we need to know? Think about it. So if we got a grid, Here's a ship, it's three long. I always get them confused. It's vertical, right? Oh, Because I always think vertical blinds and they go that way. But I guess, anyway, so that's horizontal. What else do we need to know about it? What the, ow, oh, I keep biting my lip. Someone? What are we, there's the big thing we're missing. The position, where is this ship? Where is it? So this one would be, I think uh, a simple way of doing it is where does it start? So this one would be say 4B and it's three long and it's vertical so we can figure out the rest. Horizontal. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so to do that, I'm gonna make another struct. Okay, this program's probably gonna get
I probably don't need to annotate that. So far, is that making sense to people? Now, I, I just want to reiterate, if you watch that and you're like, I get what you typed, but I don't know if I would have thought to do it that way, that's fine. I think that's just experience. And like I said, in the, ex in the assignments, we would give you the starter code that does something like this. That doesn't make sense. This can't be an... Uh, the game doesn't know if it's been hit. What, what, what needs to know if it's been hit? Well, maybe a position. Well, the game needs the board. We don't have the board here. And how big... How big is a battleship's one? Is that 10 as well? 10, yeah, 10. Um, and that, this is what we want. So it's an array of integers, and the int can be whether or not it's been hit for each position. That's more what we want. Sorry? Do you mean this one? Um, okay, so the question was why do we have a um, struct game if it's just got one thing in it? The answer is typically we probably want to add stuff to it later. So it makes sense to start it off this way. You could, the, you could just have the grid and you could do other things. But this is pretty reasonable. All right, I think that's where we'll leave our, our structs and stuff. Do people need a bit longer to copy this down? Or who, who's copied it down, who, if you're following along? All right, what do we do if we're coding? We compile frequently, make sure we've got no silly errors. All right, there's no errors at least, so that's fine. So let's run through what we've got here. We've defined a direction can either be horizontal or vertical. We've defined a struct for coordinates. This is just to make our life a bit easier when we need to store X and Y. We have a game which at the moment just has a 2D grid of a 10 by 10 series of integers. There's a lot going on in the ship. The ship knows whether or not it's been sunk. So this is just yes or no. It knows how long it is, it knows what direction it's going, and it knows where, it, where it's... Um, in fact, let's call this the start position. So that it's really clear that it's where it starts off and then goes either down or to the right. Okay? All right. So the first thing we want to do, typically, is initialize. We've declared, let's initialize. Let's set up the empty board. Like if you were to sit down and play battleships with someone, you've got to get the, the game ready. Uh, open the box and open the thing and do whatever. So let's initialize the game. So to do that, we need to actually create a game. Struct game, my game, let's just call it. Now my game is a 2D grid of integers, so let's set them all to be zero. So how do we do that? How do we go through every element of a 2D array? We just did it before. Yeah, 2D loop, exactly. Well, okay. Again, I know that I did that maybe a bit quicker than you can, but otherwise we'll never finish. We just loop through the rows and then the calls. We know how to do this. And we want to start it off by saying that my game, the board, 
of row of call is just going to start off as, as zero. So zero is not hit. It could have also been an enum, but it's the same thing really. So we initialize. Something else that we should always do is, is print. Print it out, make sure the grid's right, the values are there, we're dealing with it all correctly. And the really nice part is we can just, for simplicity's sake, copy this, paste it out, and rather than assigning it, right, we just did this before. Print that out and then um, with a space and then print a new line at the end. Whoops. And we get a 10 by 10 grid. Any other, any questions on this before we keep going? You just, okay, let me know when you finish typing. Any ideas on some next steps? Are you answering or talking? Uh, we could, but we don't need to. Okay, I have an idea for what we can do next. Something we haven't been doing a lot too much of, but this is all just in main, and main is going to get really messy pretty quickly. Right? There's already 40 lines there, and all I'm doing is initializing and printing it. So let's decompose initializing, printing out into functions to clean up the code. We're writing a bigger program, we need to keep on top of it, keep it clean. I can't remember, um, what, how long do we roughly say our function should be, lines of code wise? 50. Right. Well, we're not doing anything in the game other than initializing and declaring, and we're already at 40 something. So, breaking this down into functions is going to be a good idea. So, what we want is a function that initializes the board. Now, the best way to do this, I think, is going to make it a procedure. That initializes the board. So, what parameter should, what should it accept? Yeah, the struct game. Yeah, I agree. So, we're passing in. Um, that will work, won't it? Now that's the struct that's got the board, but um, memory-wise that will work. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, okay. We pass in the game, the game's got the grid, and so really simply all we want to do is move this code into there, and, in, and okay, yeah, in this case I've named it the same thing. Down here, we call initialize board and we give it my game. And the test to make sure that this is working correctly will be just to run it like this to make sure the print works. And then we can do maybe a quick run through of the code. Okay, we're getting some errors here. Uh, I think that's okay.
No. Sorry. It should there though. No, no, it should. The problem might be that. Let me try something. We might have to do it like this. Yeah, I thought that might have come up. Because anyway, part of this, uh, would, we, would we would write this program a little differently once we had pointers, but we don't get pointers until next week. So for now, um, we can just directly pass in the actual board to initialize board rather than the game struct. And the reason for that is quite simple. When we pass a variable to a function, as we know, we pass a copy. So it was trying to modify the copy, not the actual board itself. So we could just pass the board directly. Do you have a question? Why is it not modifying the copy? All right, that's a good question. Again, it might make more sense next week, but arrays in particular, when you pass them to functions, um, you're, not, uh, they, they, you're not passing a copy. Well, you are passing a copy, but you're passing the memory address of where the array starts, so it's still going to point to the same place in memory. Do you mean the ga the game? Yeah, like I had a similar thing. Oh, oh, okay. Can you say it again? Like when I was passing in a board, it would actually edit it. But when I was passing in anything else, it just like did a copy. Yeah, it's because arrays in in particular don't get copied the same way as other things do. But we don't have the term. We can't really explain it yet to one more lecture, and then a lot of this stuff will start making sense. It's an annoying thing to say, but it's it's just a bit of truth. Um. Again, we'll explain more of it next week. Everything gets passed as copy except for pointers and arrays of pointers. So, but again, next week, it'll, uh, no, not just on Friday, it'll make a lot more sense when we talk about pointers. All right. That's initializing the board. We can do the exact same thing to print it, right? And in fact, we just need to copy this. and print that out. Uh, and don't forget that printf. And now main is way simpler. That's a lot more simple. And also probably starts to look a lot like the Pac-Man assignment. Oh, it's already one o'clock. Do we want to break now or do one more thing and then break? I think people seem ready to do maybe one more thing and then we'll break. All right. Why don't we start placing some of the ships? Uh, uh, why don't we just place one ship, right? I think this makes sense to do in initialize board. Right, when we initialize the board, everything starts off as not hit, but we can also initialize the ships. So firstly, we initialize... Oh no, we can't do that. Let's do it, for now, let's just do it here. Let's just do it here. So first thing, what are we going to do? Create a ship. 
initialize it and basically place it on the board. Just a single ship. So how do we create a ship? Yeah. Struct ship. Um, let's just call it ship one. So uh, what are the different types of ships? So it looks like there's the big five one. Let's do that. So the length is going to equal five. Actually, does it have a name? Didn't they have names? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Carrier. Okay. Uh, actually, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's do it like that. So the length is five. Um, the direction doesn't matter because the user would pick it. For now, we're just going to pick something. Pick something. What else do we have? Okay, where's it going to start? Do we want to try and recreate this? So it'd be nine, two. We won't do A, B, C, D for now. So nine, no, nine, one, nine, one. Sorry, one, nine, Rose Coles. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, yes, yes, sorry, I should stop reading. Eight, but it should be one, eight, one, eight. Are we all following that? Sorry, I really made that confusing. Zero, one, zero, so one off is eight. You know what, also, instead of X and Y, let's keep it consistent and put that... It should be like that, right? So what did we say the row was? Eight. No, that's the column. Like that, right? Is there anything else? I think that's it. So that just initializes the ship. What we'll do is we'll print the board after we initialize it. We will pass in uh, what am I doing? We will pass in the carrier. Again, a single ship. We'll have to figure out how this scales. We print the grid, except if we... So we're going through every row and column, right? If... What do we need to check here? If the, if the ship is at the position that we're up to, we have to do something. Do we all agree with that? So how can we do this check? What do we type here? You know what? You know what, actually, I'm thinking? It might be easier to print it all first. No, no, we do have to do it like that. This might get tricky. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. So if... If the board, the row or the column, okay, let's think about it. I might have picked a really tricky example. So if this is our ship here, we go through, we go through.
I think it's something like if the ship's starting position plus the length of it. Oh god, this is going to be tricky, isn't it? Hey? It's not that. It's a, is it even that that's the problem? How do we check to draw if it's there? That'll be the starting position. But what if you've got to go down? Yeah, yeah, okay. If the, so maybe it's not too bad. If the ship dot start position dot x, right? Sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go to a Kahoot and I'm going to think about it. <laughs> Oh, do you want a quick break? Do you want a quick break? Go, go, go have a quick break. I'll get the code ready. I'll also be thinking about this. Um, all right. How do I... Oosh. Should still be on. Yeah, I gotta rerun it. Yeah. They'll have to deal with it.
It's on the live site now. It should be in week five, no? I've just sent it to you on Teams, yep. Yeah. Alright, ready to... Hello, 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 hello? We ready to start? Alright, if you need a raise, let's go. Ooh, what is this? Which of the following is the correct way to declare a 2D agency? So it looks like there might be multiple correct answers. We don't use the comma, that doesn't work, and it's not on the type, it's on the name. Very good. Pretty straightforward, it looks like. King Definfo. Alright, what is the number of elements or the number of integers in this 2D grid? How do you answer so quickly? I mean, I know it's. Very good. Four times five is twenty. Too easy. All right, a little bit harder. What is the size of the following in bits? Tracking me? Nope. Very good. How do you calculate it? What? No, but what are you, how are you calculating it? Yeah, four times five times um, 32. Very good. 320 had a... What did these people do? Who put 320? Anyone? Want to own up to it? I'm trying to think what the calculation would be. What the mistake would be. I'm not sure. 
King's staying on top. Good job. All right, what's going to be printed? You got to think about this one. Including me, I need to think about this one. Yeah, it's eight. Yeah. All right, brutal. So let me let me show you what I did in my mind to get the correct answer. And then I'll see what most of you did. So, <laughs> people are figuring it out. It's always rows and cols, right? It's always rows and columns. So in my mind, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so it's the third column. So I know it was this. Yeah? And it's the second Sorry, third row, and it's the second column, so it's eight. Zero, one. What did a lot of you do? Four. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you just were off by one. Yeah. Okay. My way of explaining it was way more complicated. So it should have just been zero one two zero one. Yeah, okay. Classic off by one errors. I, I, tell, I tell you, they, they don't stop. Ooh. Good job, King. All right, last one. What is the index value for the last row in a 2D array declared as int array 5.6? Majority of you got it, so you, you learned from the previous one. If there's five, remember it's always row col. So if there's five rows, but it starts at zero, it just take one off it. So it's four. That would be the fifth row. Let's see. Do you think King stayed on? To, who's King? Are you here? Are you here, or are you online? Is it you? Do you think? Did you get it? <laughs> I don't know, let's see. I love it, the drama. It's cut off a bit, I think. JMP, NA, keeping your privacy. I think it's gonna be King. Yeah, well done. <laughs> All right, where are you? And the third, are you online? Yeah, take a screenshot, if you're, sorry? It's not tracking me? Oh yeah, I'll fix it later. Um, how do we want to do this? All right, here's five cards. Winner can pick out of the five, and then someone's okay. So pick the one you want. What did you come? Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Second time here. Congratulations. And uh, I guess uh, NA is online. Or oh, they're really anonymous and they don't, they're in the room but they don't want to tell us. Has someone claimed it? If you're online, come grab it. Um, come grab it at some point. Let us know. Yes, no, maybe? Okay, we had a rogue entra entrance. 
All right, I'm gonna just fix this camera, apparently. Uh. Okay. All right, well done to our winners and to the people that place. How do we go? Did you come on for me? Oh, but I don't want to open teams. Uh, all right, it's all right. We can we can deal with it. But you said if it's horizontal, it should be like actually vertical, right? Like like if it's horizontal, it should be downwards. Which way is horizontal? Yeah, horizontal. Oh, is that. like but in the oh I know okay I thought in the actual game. You... No no no. Oh, that's I mean, fine. That's, but that's, that's fine. That's, that's, quick, that's All right, quick, yeah. all right. Hold on. We had our best people on it working. <laughs> All right, what is your solution here? It's, it's literally just what I was saying. But it's a bit messy because you need a double while loop. Oh, so you print there. But then how do you, how is it not just I tested it again. when you just print? Because I tested it again because I printed it twice and it still maintained. But see, the grid's broken. No, because oh, cause I haven't printed a new line, right? So if I, wait, if I print a new line here, so I don't know where my actual function went. What's it called? Print board. So I can read. Board. And then. Wow, that's a lot of pressure coding up here. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you lose like 200 IQ points from the code. Yeah, board, board, board. Okay, so if we print it like this. So I'll try like, that, but I'm still suspicious, but. Because, yeah. Oh, is it uh, game? My game. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah, it, it, it literally just worked. Like, uh, no. Am I passing it? Anymore? So it's, I know that that's just because the starting position because we started at so we just because this is eight right so if we're trying to it's just an, oh it's so just we'll an edge put case. it in the middle then. yeah that's what I was saying because I'm still suspicious oh because the length is five right so we started at two what? that's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I think there's little errors, but I think the general gist of it. We need to figure out what the little errors are. I'm gonna do it a different way. Yeah. I'm gonna simplify it. Sorry. Okay. No, sorry, no, sorry, no. sorry. What if you just get the assignment code? Oh, I don't want to do that. Right. Okay. No, that's all right. Oh, it's all right. I got a different all way right, of doing right. it. Good Thank luck. you. All right. All right. Change of plans. Yeah, this is what we'll do. Okay, change of plan. So we'll, we'll put we'll put the information into the board rather than the ships. I think it's going to be a lot simpler. So after we initialize our board to all zeros, we can initialize the ship data. In fact. I think if we pass in the struct ship ship here, we can do it, we can just do it here. All right. So just to remind us, hello. Oh. Uh, battleships. Oh yeah, I didn't pass it in. Okay. 
Uh, just to remind us, we go through when we initialize and set all the, all the 10 by 10 grids to zero. We're passing in the ship into the initialize board now. So we set it all to zero, then we can start initializing based off the ships. So what we can say is, our board, whoops. Well, we can, we can loop through Okay, let's just do it for the... What do we say? This is horizontal, right? Okay. If we have a horizontal ship... So we've got a horizontal ship. So what we want to do is we want to start at the X and Y starting position, loop through from the length, and set those to a different integer value. In the board, though. Does that make sense? So for... Uh, I'll, do, I'll do... This should work, I think. Now, we're starting off at where... the start position of the, of the ship. Not hip. Now, how many times do we loop? The length of what? Of the ship. So if the ship's five pieces long, we want to loop five times and set them all to a value that's not zero. That's exactly right. And then this is just row plus plus. Now, so we start a loop. So let's say I have one one, which is going to be here. We start here. We want to set this to something, this to something, this to something, this to something, this to something. So we want to get the board of row. Oh, we didn't loop for the... Oh, no, that's okay. Oh, good question. Good point. That's right, actually. Uh, but we can do it. Yeah, uh... No, but length will be five. Oh, here you mean? I mean, like in the condition, the world grows smaller than the start position grows. Yes, yes, that's correct. Is that right? So if it's 1, 1, it's got to be row is less than, oh yeah, 1 plus, yeah, yeah, okay, that's, okay. So we just have to offset it by its starting position. So if it's here, we want to count from, you know, this up for 5 more. The board's row, now the coal is going to be the ship. the ship call, but it won't change, right? It's just going to be the static call every time. Uh, and why don't we use... Um, they're all integers in this case. For, for now, let's just make it a 1. No, this row is... Oh, whoops. Do I have it the wrong way around? Yeah, I've got it the wrong way around, right? I've really done, done. So this should be column. This should be col. Yeah, but let me just do it to col. So 
So that should be the row, and this should be Cole. Whoa, all right. Sorry? That? Yeah. Uh, this is probably the least, um, the most confusing, um, oh, of course we have a problem, lecture code I've done. All right, what's going on here? Index 10 is out of bounds. Oh, I'm guessing I'm just going, because what's, what's the starting position? Yeah, eight. Yeah, so I'm going off the grid. So let's just start this over at, at one, like we said. Alrighty, <laughs> believe it or not, that's our carrier there. I know that was super confusing, so let's run through it slower and get everyone to understand it. All right, so the first thing we're doing is, is creating our ship and setting up its values. So it's a five length of ship, it's going horizontally, and I wanted to start at position one one. All right, all happy with that so far? We initialize the board and we're passing in that ship. So we are going to encode the game into the ship, into the board. So that, that, this is the initialize board function. So its parameters are the actual game board, the 10 by 10 grid, and for now it's just getting passed in the ship that we want to add to the board. In the future there's multiple ships, but once we get the first one working we can worry about expanding it. All right, here we initialize all um, board positions to zero. So this is fairly simple. We have a nested loop from, the, from, from our nested grid or a nested board, and we set every element just to be zero. This is still all good so far? All right, then it's, this is the tricky part. So we need, to, we need to look at our ship's data and sort of transpose that to the board. So remember, the ship is at one at position one one, which is starts here, and it goes for five pieces long. So the first thing I need to do is figure out: Am I going this way or am I going this way? That's the first thing, because everything in the body of this will change depending on the direction that I'm going. So if we're going horizontally, we're changing the columns not the rows. That's still making sense? All right. What we're doing then, now this for loop's a little long, so it's getting cut off. Is that still readable by any chance? Oh, that looks okay. That's still readable? All right. It looks better up there, but. All right, this is the first component. Where do we start looping from? On the, on the board itself. So if we think about it, we need to start looping from, well this is quite simple, where the ship starts. The column that the ship starts. So if the column is 1, 1, we need to start at this position. Or it's the second column. So what we're saying is create me a counter that's counting the column and start it off as wherever the ship's start, uh, position's starting column is. Is that making sense to people? Give me a thumbs up, because otherwise I won't know when, when we start to get to the tricky part. There wasn't a lot of thumbs there. Is it already confusing? Who's confused? Okay. Were you... Are we okay with this part? The starting is initializing order zero. Maybe we can try mapping it.
So this is my grid. I want to put a ship, just for example, here and here. On the on the on this function. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Sure. So the question was, can we just do a quick um, recap over the function or the procedure? So we've got a function here called initialize board, and its job is to modify the board that it gets passed in, so that it puts in the grid, starts it all off at zero, and then puts in where the the ships are. It gets passed in the 2D grid itself. Okay, the void here is saying that the, ship, the, the function doesn't return anything because it's just modifying what it gets passed in. And this only works for arrays at this point that we can modify. Are you happy? Good. It's all right, I'll keep going. And then we're also passing in the ship because we need to know where the ship is on the board. So we have access to the board itself and the ship. And it's directly modifying it. That's why it's modifying it here. All right. So if I tell you, hey, there's a ship at 1, 1, and it's horizontal. And I want you to fill in x's for where this ship is. What do you have to do? If you, like literally, if you were just to draw this on a pen and paper, you would know which two cells to, to fill out, right? But what, let's try and break down what you're doing step by step. The first thing you would probably do is go to position 1-1. One, one. Do you all agree? You would find position 1-1, one, one, which is here. That's step one. How do we do that in code? How do we do that programmatically? We can't just say, you know, go to 1-1. One, one. I mean, we have to think about uh, what do we have? We've got an array of an array, right? We have rows and cols. We need to start an index. So which, which row is this? What's the index of the row? One. And what's the col? So we need to start a row int and set it to one. And that's what our code's doing here. Or, or column in this case first. So I'm creating a column of where the ship is starting and I'm assigning it Look at that, the value of the ship's starting column, which is, in our case, one. So all I'm doing here is assigning this column variable to be the ship starting column position. Is that, so is that just that information okay so far? Yes, a, a few more nods, extra nods, good, good, good. All right, now back to our example here. Let's say it's three pieces long. So we, we've gone to this cell here. You would know just to put an X in this box, put an X in the next box, put an X in the next box. Okay. How do we turn that into code? How do we make that programmatic? And the answer is we just do the thing in a loop ship length times, moving over the coal each time. All right, just conceptually get your head around that. We need to turn intuition, right, we know just to put an X here, an X here, an X here, but some part of our brain, maybe it, it is, maybe it isn't, but 
there is some loop happening, some repetition. We're starting here, it's like yes, 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 and then we're done. Right? A lot of people are looking at their screens, but I don't know how helpful that would be, but I won't tell you how to live your lives. So we're starting here. I mark it as an X. I add one to coal. I mark it as an X. I add one to coal. I mark it as an X. So whenever we have a loop, we need to think about how do I know when to stop looping? And the answer is I need to stop looping when I've done it length times. So that's what we're turning into code. So let's look at that. So this is the starting position. Okay, that's fine. This is the condition. So how, when, how many times do I loop? And it's, it's a bit long and a bit complicated, but if we break it down, it, it's a bit straightforward. So I want to loop. Let's think about it. Okay. Let's pay close attention. Getting our heads around more complex stuff is really important. I want to loop while my column value, which has started off as what? Who said one? One. Yeah. Uh, yes? It starts off as one, which is here. I want to loop while that value is less than where the ship's starting column is, which is here, plus its length. One, two, three, four, five. So I want to loop while that column, which starts at one, is not less than the starting column plus five, so six, because this is the sixth column. The reason we have to do it this way is because if it starts in, in another column, right, we can't just say loop while it's less than five, because what if you started at, a, at column five? It would just stop looping. They're really, that's the two tricky parts of all of this. The final thing we do is we add one to the column every time we loop so that we're moving by. And when we're in the body of the loop, when we're in the body of the loop, we're going to the board, so to our 2D grid, and we're saying, hey, because we're moving horizontally, the row is never changing, right? So the row is going to be the ship's row, whatever, doesn't matter. And the column will be changing, so use the column variable that we just defined, which will be counted five times. And what that does is, run it again, sets them all to zero, and then sets the boards these board values to be one. Okay, good. I know it's a bit more complex than maybe that we're used to. What I would suggest you do, if you're, if you're looking at this and you think I'm, I'm pretty stuck here, what I suggest you do is when you go home and go to study or whatever, get the code that will be made available Get a piece of paper and draw it out. Programmers, we get stuck on things like this all the time. It will never stop happening. In a few weeks, you'll look back at this and go, this was so simple, I don't know how I got stuck. And then in a year, you'll look back at what you're doing in a few weeks and think, that was so simple, how do I get stuck? It, it'll never stop happening. So what you've got to do is learn how to, how to approach it. I think pen and paper, drawing it out, figuring out how it's working is really good. I think we should stop it there. I don't wanna I don't wanna do more. Maybe an exercise for you. Can you get columns working? So can you get the if
So what I would love to see, guys, is if on the forum you post, you, you know, once you get it working, post it up and share it. And then, maybe, maybe on Friday, oh, we might not get time on Friday actually, but start extending the program. What if, how about multiple ships? That would be a first place to start. So if you're curious, what I would be thinking is you can't, you don't really want to pass in every ship. So what might you want to pass in? If you got multiple ships, what, what would you use? No? An array of ships. And then you do this for every ship. Um, and then you can figure out actually the, the actual, you know, bombing part of Battleship. Okay, that was a bit rough, but I hopefully um, you'll get something out of this lecture. Guys, quickly. On Friday, you ready? You listening? Everyone, this is important. Hello, hello, hello. Is the camera still looking at me? This is important. On Friday is one of the most important lectures of Comp 1511. It's the pointers lecture. It's a very polished lecture. It won't be like this, don't worry. Um, pointers will be used for the next half of Comp 1511. It potentially is the concept that causes the most grief to people. But we're going we're gonna to do it really well. We're going to all learn it. But please, I highly suggest, I guess this is more to people online, but come to the Friday lecture in person or please watch it online. You want to get ahead on the point of stuff so that if you're stuck, you can go to help. You don't want to add the you know, five day delay to when you watch the recording. And you want to make sure that if you've got questions, you can get answered. Pointers is so useful. And pointers is what sets Comp 1511 at UNSW apart from every other group of eight university. They don't teach it in first term. We do. We do a really good job of it, but please come and get a good, good sleep the night before. All right, I'll make sure this code is all shared. I'll see you Friday. Good luck with assignment one, um, and have a good week.